I could only get about nine inches before I had to cut this in half and I can only get about 1.5 inches more. But I definitely know some monsters out there who are go goaded with the sauce, as to speak. <laughs> Sorry. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're going to talk about what I personally think is a very important lesson when beginning the intermediate levels of pottery. At the beginner levels of your ceramic art journey, your job is to essentially learn your base shapes, your bowls, your cups, to get really familiar with your cylinders and your clay, to learn how to wedge your lids, your lidded jars, things of that nature. But once you get to the intermediate stages, your job is to learn how to stretch that medium, to really work with it and understand how it works. And in passing through the beginner to the intermediate phases, there seems to be a very popular lesson that most teachers in the ceramic art world love to teach their students. And in today's video, I'm gonna teach you that same lesson. If you're watching this video at the wheel or in your studio, I want you to do this along with me. And I'm gonna show you the lesson first, and then I'm going to teach you the purpose of the lesson. So to begin with, I want you to get 1.5 pounds of clay. Next, I want you to center this clay. After you've sufficiently centered your clay body, I want you to open this up and pull this cylinder, this 1.5 pounds of clay, up to 12 inches. Don't worry about actually making it all the way up to 12 inches. It's not like a make or break thing. You're not trash if you can't make it to 12 inches with 1.5 pounds of clay. The goal is to try your best to try and get as much height as you can with this cylinder and 1.5 pounds of clay. And after that, we'll continue the lesson. <laughs> As most of us will find out, the high majority of us cannot reach all the way up to 12 inches on 1.5 pounds of clay, at least not with a clean straight cylinder and any little tricks. Even I only made it to 9 inches. When I took pottery lessons in school, this was the very first lesson that my teacher, Yosho Taylor, taught me as soon as I got to the first class of my intermediate teachings in pottery. He had us all get 1.5 pounds of clay, pull as high as we can, and then he pulled out some magic on us. You see, many of us kind of had a knack for clay, a special little talent that we didn't know we had. We caught the clay bug, we ended up getting really good at it. And in my classroom, you had to take the beginning class two times to graduate and go to the intermediate class. So by the time you took your second class, you were feeling fairly confident. This definitely melted the wings off of Icarus. We flew a little too high, we thought we were big ballin', until many of us struggled to get past about six inches with 1.5 pounds of clay in a straight cylinder. After we understood that this type of height is kind of difficult to get with that amount of clay, the next thing he asked of us, as I will ask of you right now, is to cut your cylinder in half. After you cut your cylinder in half, you're gonna try and pull at least one or two inches more off of this cylinder. <music> Thank you. 
I first cut my cylinder in half, you saw that I had a little less than five inches. Now we have 6.5 inches. So we've got about 1.5 more inches out of that cylinder. This was the magic that he showed us. This might seem normal to a lot of you now, but when I was first taught this lesson, it blew the entire class's mind. Not only was it difficult to get up to the amount of inches we got in the first place with 1.5 pounds of clay, we also thought we had no more left in the clay body to give. Lo and behold, we cut our cylinder in half and our teacher demonstrated there's always a tiny bit more clay at the very bottom. After most of us struggled to even get past 7 inches with 1.5 pounds of clay, he then requested that we cut it in half and he showed all of us that our clay body had a small bit more to give. None of us thought that this was our fault, we thought we had given all the effort we can for the cylinder, but then he humbled us by showing us that your clay body has a tiny bit more to give. This was a couple of lessons in the making. After most of us struggled to even get past 6 or 7 inches with 1.5 pounds of clay, he then showed us that the clay body has a little bit more to give, by cutting the cylinder in half and pulling up about 2 more inches worth of clay. Of course at the time we had thought we had mastered the beginner steps of throwing a cylinder, but there was a lot more to learn from this process. This lesson was to illustrate a couple of things, namely that we're using a bit too much clay. Beginners have a bad habit of getting like 5 pounds of clay and only getting up to 6 inches in their cylinder. With using only 1.5 inches, my teacher got really close to about 10 inches and then pulled more clay up the body even after he cut most of that clay off, illustrating that most of us are using way too much clay. He then proceeded to tell us about the hard times of the old days, where clay was not as abundant and as malleable, didn't have perfect temperatures and very smooth, plastic, movable bodies that we can easily buy from a store like we can nowadays. He told us about the days in which they only had a little bit of water because towns would go through droughts. Clay was not as abundant as it is today, and because of this, potters had to learn to work with the least amount of clay they could while still keeping the stability and strength of their clay body for their personal cone. Especially in times of recession or economic instability, we would have to save and reuse all the materials we had. This includes recycling our clay body, watching how much clay we use, making sure that our water isn't wasted, reusing our water, making sure that we use every little bit of every resource to become self-sustaining potters. Secondly, this showed us that our clay body has a little more to give. And thirdly, he taught us the real secret to pulling up a higher cylinder. The high majority of beginners will end up pulling somewhere around here, but if you noticed as I was pulling through the video, most if not all of my pulls start from me pinching out a little tiny piece of clay right about from here. Every single one of my pulls, if you rewind this video, you'll see that I pinch off a tiny piece of clay like this, making a small bump, and then I will take that bump and I will pull it up as much as I can in order to get more height. This mentality is actually still pretty prevalent in potter culture, especially in the more old school potters. They will use the least amount of water they can to make sure they don't stress the body or overwork it and make sure that they don't get too much saturation of water while working with it. A lot of them like to work with drier clays, they can use more water and they can stretch their forms out while getting the clay a little bit more thin so it doesn't flop on them. Really old school potters still have a habit of working with stiff clay so that they can mold it wider, stronger, use less clay while it still stands up in comparison to its floppier clay that has a lot more water in the clay body. This was something that I thought was personal to my teacher. I thought my teacher taught only his class this lesson. But after going through multiple studios and multiple classes, I find that a lot of teachers will pass this very lesson down to their students and have them do this very activity. They'll have them get 1.5 or possibly even 2 pounds of clay sometimes. I've seen classes do that. Pull it as high as they can, cut it in half. They then go around the classroom and illustrate to everyone that their clay has a little bit more to give than they thought. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I want to give a big shout out to the Facebook group, Clay Buddies. They're the ones who reminded me this practice existed. And I've been to maybe like five or six studios and, and I've known plenty of teachers that do this and other students who are like, oh yeah, my teacher did that to me. I really hope that a lot of you Potters take this practice to heart and try it in your classrooms and homesteads or wherever you might practice your real throne ceramic artwork. If you like this information and you like videos like this, remember to click all the YouTube buttons and let me know how you did down in the comments below. I'm really curious. I could only get about nine inches before I had to cut this in half and I can only get about 1.5 inches more. But I definitely know some monsters out there who are goaded with the sauce. 
as to speak. <laughs> Sorry. I definitely know some people out there who are so good at working their cylinders with their specific clay body and making sure that it's a certain amount of dryness and who are so good at pulling that they can actually get 12 inches off of 1.5 pounds. It's very difficult. I can't do it. I'll fully admit that. But tell me how you did doing this exercise in your homestead and in your classrooms down in the comments below. Hopefully you have a great next kiln load and I will see you dirty potters next week. You know, this exercise was really to knock some of us off of the pedestal that we were on while thinking we're really good at ceramic artwork. But I remember one student in specific in which pulled like six inches and was so happy. She's like, yeah, I got six inches off of 1.5 pounds. Yeah, I'm goaded, I'm goaded. And then my teacher came across and like cut the cylinder in half and got right back up to six inches and, and she just died. She just died inside. <laughs> Thank you for your patronage. Daddy made you some content. Daddy made you your favorite, now open wide.